wasn't even thinking about it. And so um, his back um, has improved every day. Um, and you know, having at times had issue with my back, it, it's a day-to-day -day thing. And so um, if he feels good enough to play tomorrow, he'll play. If not, he won't. But he's, he's improving every day. What value was there in some of the rotations? You know, you, you guys accommodated your lineup to adjust with not having him and found some things that worked the other night. How valuable are those types of moments here in January when you're forming a long-term identity with a team? I do. I think it was really valuable. I mean, you know, the, the minutes that, that Jalen Washington got, I thought, um, really helped us and um, really gave him a lot of confidence out there on the floor. Um, as well as uh, Justin McCoy, you know, him, his ability to come in. I thought he did a fantastic job of defending, um, attacking the offensive glass. He had energy, effort, and enthusiasm out there on the floor. And so um, I was really pleased with the way that he played. And so it just continues to add uh, depth to us and allow us um, to have different lineups out there on the floor when we play Notre Dame tomorrow morning. Hubert, after the Wake Forest game, you said that Notre Dame seems like they always play you guys tough. Uh, what is it about, about what they do that seems to give you guys some problems? Well, they're a really good team every year, and they're extremely well coached. I mean, they, you know, they, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't have contributed to their style of play. I would, I would have contributed to their every year. They've always been a really good, talented basketball team. Um, not only do they have a very talented team, they have a very old and experienced team that has played well together. And so um, tomorrow will be a very difficult game against a great opponent, but we're really excited about the opportunity and challenge of playing them. And it's always fun to be out there and compete against them out there on the floor. Notre Dame seems to be, uh, they got veterans on the team, but I feel like we're saying that about a lot of teams nowadays because of the COVID year or what have you. How, how difficult does that make it, you know, uh, uh, I guess, preparing for teams that you know are going to, they're not going to be intimidated by the environment, they're not going to be intimidated if they get down early, just, you know, having your guys stay with the game. Well, I mean, I think that's important to understand who you're playing and, you know, the type of players and system that you're going up against. And, you know, we know that, you know, Notre Dame is a team from an offensive standpoint that can really shoot the ball from three. Um, they do an excellent job of taking care of the ball. They're excellent at passing and, and they do a really good job of, you know, finding mistakes defensively to allow them to get the shot that they want. Um, defensively, they change defenses, whether it's man-to-man -man or zone. Because of their lineup, they have the ability to switch one through four and sometimes one through five. And so um, you have to change up your attack. But again, you know, it's you know, their lineup, they've, they've been through it before. And so they've been in uh, tough situations and um, being able to handle adversity out there on the floor and be able to come out on the winning side. And so... It's a very successful group. It's a very talented group in Notre Dame. And as I said before, extremely well coached. Some of the guys on your bench will go a game that maybe they don't even play, then another game they may get 15, 20 minutes or something like that. Do you view your bench as having a lot of depth in terms of being situational, that you can use certain guys against one type of team that play, does something, and there's other guys that will go that can handle one against something different? I do. You know, I, I think it's important to be able to um, – to be able to tweak and to pivot and alter and, and to adjust. Um, you know, there's lineups out there on the floor that dictate certain lineups for us being out there on the floor, whether it's to match up a little bit better defensively or to put us in a situation where we can be more effective and efficient on the offensive end. And so to be able to have that type of versatility, I think is, I think it's really good. You know, one of the things that that I experienced as a player and I, and I communicate to them always is that an opportunity is 100% going to come. Um, when it's going to come, where, how, and the manner in which it's going to come, I can't promise you that, but when it comes, the question on the floor is, is, is for you to be ready. And when your number is called, 
to be ready to go out there to be the best that you can be. And our guys do a great job of preparing themselves, um, playing as hard as they can in practice, and putting themselves in a position so that when their number is called, um, they're ready to play their best. Justin was saying that the other night after the game, because he hadn't played since the Citadel, and he had getting 17 minutes the other night. What is the value in having a guy like him who understands that, knows how to prepare himself every game, but he's also been in college for four years, and he did play a decent role on the UVA team a couple years ago that won the regular season? No, that, I mean, that's just, um, that that's who Justin is. You know, he's always been somebody that works extremely hard. He's always been someone that is prepared um, for whatever or whenever his number is called. And um, it's his preparation before and after practice and his attention to detail that allows him to, for example, against Wake Forest, play 17 minutes and start the second half and be productive on both ends of the floor. And so that's why he's, he's so valuable for us. To build off kind of the bench, I think a lot of people are kind of surprised by the lack of minutes for Dontre Styles. Like we're not in practice, we don't know what's going on. What can it take to? What would you like to see from him in practice to get more time, or, or is there a reason why his minutes have kind of dipped this this season? Well, again, you know, one of the things that I always say in, in, in terms of in terms of playing time is you have to play well in practice, you play well in practice and stack practices and stack plays together, you'll play well in games. And if you, once I put you in a game and if you play well in games, that's how and you stack good plays, then you'll play more minutes. It's not also, there's, there's different parts and different layers for anybody. One, obviously you have to play well, but number two is you also, there's, there's competition out there also. It's not just one person. There's a number of guys at all the positions. And so there's competition every practice. So not only you know, as a player do you have to play well, you also have to play better than the person that's at your position. And so um, I've been there before. I, I, I played and I've whether it's college or the NBA, I've, I've started, I've come off the bench, I've played big minutes, I've played limited minutes, I've gotten DMP coaches' decisions, I've gotten traded, cut, waived, picked in the first round. There's nothing that any player can go through that I haven't experienced myself. And the only thing that you have control over is your preparation, your practice, and your play. And at the end of the day, through my experience, it has always worked out that when that opportunity comes to take advantage of it, and um, that's how I'll determine playing time. Do you feel like you've had a, or did you feel like you had a defensive breakthrough at the end of, against Wake Forest, and have you seen any carryover in practice from kind of that defensive intensity and the results it generated? Well, I wouldn't look at it as a, as a breakthrough, but I would look at it as um, a blueprint on how we could play defense. The last 10 minutes against Wake Forest, I thought was fantastic. I thought we were really good on the ball. I felt like our physicality and our effort and our energy and our rotations and our talking, our boxing out, our contesting shots was really good. And it allowed us to be even better and more efficient on the offensive end. And so that last 10 minutes defensively probably was one of the best, if not the best stretch defensively that we played all year. And my hope is, is that we can be encouraged by that and continue to do that for an entire game, hopefully tomorrow morning. In what ways have you seen uh, Armando's leadership kind of develop? Well, I, I think in terms <laughs> of um, his effort consistently, um, not just in the games, but also in practice. And he's been talking a lot more this season, you know, just uh, um, communicating not only to um, his teammates and to you know, younger teammates like Jalen, but also to the coaches in terms of what he sees out there on the floor. He's been uh, more vocal in the uh, huddles during timeouts, which I have loved. It's something that I've encouraged. I, I don't like quiet huddles. I like communication. I like you know, emotions and people talking and 
Armando has, has really stepped up in the, from that standpoint of just communicating and have a voice, not only for himself, but for the team in general, and I think it's been really good. Hey, Kiefer Kale is one of the best college players I've seen it. <clears throat> shrugging off maybe previous misses and then hitting, you know, taking fearless shots and getting on a roll. When he's having a stretch like this right now, particularly from outside, do you, you do anything different with him at all as far as, you know, helping him through that or leave him alone and he, he figures it out? I don't even look at it as Caleb is having a stretch. I don't, I'm not even, I'm not, are you talking about in terms of this? Just for three points shooting. Yeah. Three, three out of 15 over three games. Yeah, I don't look at Caleb that way. Caleb is a basketball player. The thing that I think about Caleb was maybe he didn't shoot the ball as well as he wanted to against Wake Forest, but we don't win without him. His, his, man, his defense was special against Wake Forest. And then I, I can't remember the time, but I think we were up by one. They threw a lob, and it was for an easy dunk. He came from the weak side and blocked it, and that's when RJ got it pitched it ahead for Armando for the dunk and put us up by three. That was the biggest play of the game. And so my thoughts for Caleb is I look at him as a basketball player. He can he can <coughs> dominate and change a game in many different areas, not just shooting. And over the last couple of days, the thing that I've been thinking about how special he was on the defensive end. So I just, I never as a player, and I don't think about that stuff with our guys. I, you know, percentages even out. If you miss 10, I've always had the thinking that the next 10 are going in. Right. With, with him, too, with, with the growth of any college player, I imagine you've seen him. I would, I would, how would you describe that part of maybe him embracing the things you're talking about that maybe the outside shot isn't falling, but you can contribute with recovering on the defensive end and those things that he's maybe embraced over more over time? Well, he has, you know, and that's what allows him to be one of the better, not just guards, but players in the country. Um, and why I think he's going to have an unbelievable long NBA career because he can do a number of things. He's a big guard. And he can do a number of different things. It's not just dominate with his scoring or his three-point shooting. Um, he can distribute the basketball. He can defend. And when you can make an impact for yourself and for the team out there on the floor um, in a number of different areas, that's that's a sign of a really special player. And that's the thing that I think about Caleb. Hebrew, back to Armando. Is it, I don't know. It seems to me I could be wrong about this. Obviously. Uh, is he moving better? Uh, does he have more bounce than he did at the start of the year? There just seems something about his, I don't know, his activity level. I know well, you guys are trying better. to get No, it's, it's different. I think when he came back from his injury, I think he's, you know, and I haven't discussed this with him, but, you know, sometimes, and it was just briefly against, you know, Virginia Tech, sometimes when you take a step back, you can kind of think <clears> and reflect and kind of, see things from a different perspective and change things. And I think the change that I've seen since coming back um, from his injury where he missed Virginia Tech, um, he's running the floor better. He's um, He is working definitely harder to catch the ball where he wants to down on the post. And I think it's made a huge difference. I, I do. I think he is running the floor so much better. And the pace and the persistence in terms of how hard he's working to make sure he's catching the ball where he wants to, where he can do something quickly around the basket. It, he's He's been a lot better in doing that as well. Doing the work early. He's doing the work early. He really is, you know. And, uh, um, those two areas, I think, drastically have gotten better um, since the beginning of the season, with the exception of the second half of college. Right, right. The other night you mentioned the idea of digging deeper kind of as the team motto. But before you said that, Armando mentioned it to us in the post game. Is he an example of digging deeper every game, kind of like just how you mentioned, putting more effort in? Yeah, it, it is. And, and for the whole team, it's what is required. It's not a slogan or something that I'm just trying to get them to remember or say. It's, it's important. And it's the only way that you're going to have a chance to do something special, you know, is 
you have to continue to improve. You have to continue to dig deeper and 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 continue to to get better. And you know that's something that that all of us as a team has talked about a lot. That uh, for us to continue to improve and to get better, um, we have to ask more of ourselves, and we have to continue to dig deeper in our effort, our energy, our concentration, our preparation, our practice, our play, just just to put ourselves in a position to possibly be successful. And if you don't have that willingness to dig deeper, to get playing time, to dig deeper, to, um, to get low post position, to dig deeper, to get to the offensive glass, um, at this level and the type of conference and, and the talent that we're playing is just, you don't put yourself in a good position to be successful. Is that more important two, now? Two more questions. Is that more important now than it was maybe in November, given that two-month timeline into the season with conference play? No, I think it's always important. I'm not a beginning of the season, middle of the season, end of the season, off season. I just have always felt any time that you get an opportunity to step out there on the floor, it's an opportunity to dig deeper and get better, whether it's individually and as a team. and. It's a blessing and an honor to be able to, and I told them this before the game, you know, there should be an enjoy and an enjoyment to be out there on the floor for three things. One, you're doing something that you love. Two, not only you're doing something that you love, you know, you're doing it at a place that you love. And then three, you're doing something that you love at a place that you love with people that you care about and love. And so if you put all that together, there should be a joy and enjoyment and a passion out there on the floor to dig deeper and to get better in every area out there on the floor. Two more areas. Yeah, I kind of wanted to ask a little bit of an off the court question, but tomorrow UNC is gonna premiere this artists are athletes, athletes are artists, collaboration between your team, the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, Carolina Performing Arts. Uh, the Daily Tar Heels doing a story on this collaboration. Just kind of wanted to ask about your reaction to this partnership and the video featuring Caleb Love. Well, I haven't seen a, a lot of it, but um, I know Caleb really enjoyed the opportunity and the experience to be able to collaborate and be able to uh, do different things and um, to explore the, the connection between our game and, 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 and artistry. And I think, it's, I think it's great. You know, it's uh, one of the things that I think is important is, you know, athletics and music and, and, and art it can all bring together um, and, and, and it's all binding, it's, it's all the same and be able to uh, bring all those things together and be able to um, experience those things together and see things that are the same and different, I think is really good. And um, I know Caleb really enjoyed the process and the experience and we're very thankful and honored that they asked us to be a part of it. Last um, we're in a new year, you know, we're kind of getting to that stretch where games are going to become more and more competitive as we look into March. Um, if you had to give, you know, a New Year's resolution for this team, what would it be? I'm not a New Year's resolution guy. Um, I've just never been that. I, I will say that for this year's team, for this year's team to reach its full potential, that for this year's team to this year untap um, its full potential and so that we can be the best team that we can possibly be and then at the end of the day we just live with the results so if I were a New Year's resolution guy that that we were we would be um, we would be the best team that we could possibly be this year's team Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everybody. We'll get our